Hey girls, welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on notifications to see all of my future videos. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing another dip powder fill. As you can see, I do have a little bit of nail growth along with a tiny bit of lifting. So we're going to fix that issue today and do the dip powder fill. I will be using the Bellavina Professional Portable E-File to remove the dip powder from my nails. You can use a hand file, but I would highly recommend that you use an e-file. This e-file is absolutely beautiful. I really love mine. I will be using the large barrel coarse bit drill bit to remove the product from my nails. This drill bit is really quick to remove product. I'm going to be using the e-file on a speed of about 8,000 RPMs. The main thing you want to focus on with a dip powder fill is removing some bulk of the product. So we're basically just going to file over the entire surface of the nail to try to remove some layers of dip powder. If you're planning to do your dip powder fill with the same color that you're currently wearing or a darker shade of dip powder, you can leave a good amount of the dip powder color on your natural nail. Because the dip powder that you're planning to use will be the same shade as the current color that you are wearing or darker, the dip powder that you leave on the nail will not show through the new dip powder color. If you're using a drill bit such as this one, you want to be very careful not to file over your skin. This could be very uncomfortable and even cut you. As you can see, I've just about completely filed off the gel top coat that I was wearing. I am now filing down into the layers of dip powder. As I said, you do want to try to get the dip powder layer to be very thin, that way your new manicure will not have any lumps and your nails will not be too thick. If you have any lifting within your manicure, at this point you'll be able to see it very well. As you can tell around the cuticle area of the nail, the shade of dip powder is a lot lighter than the rest of the nail. This is the area of the dip powder that has lifted. In order to remove the lifted area of the nail, you need to file above where the lifting occurs. Because the lifted area of the dip powder is not currently attached to your nail bed, by the time you file down the dip powder to reach your nail bed area, the lifted area of the nail will easily come off. If you do not know, you do really need to remove all lifted areas from your old manicure before applying another product. The reason for this is dirt and moisture can get trapped underneath the lifted area of the nail and give you an infection. As you can see, after filing off the lifted area, it easily pops off of the nail. This is what some people refer to as sealing your cuticle area. Here's what the nail looks like after all of the lifting has been removed. I'm going to repeat the same step to all of the other nails.
After all of the nails have been filed, I'm then going to take the professional grade cuticle pusher and push back the cuticles of all of the nails. This is going to reveal more of the nail plate and allow me to have more room when doing my dip powder fill. Next, I'm going to go back with my e-file and the mandrel bit and arbor band. This is a fine grit arbor band and I'm going to be using a speed of about 4,000 RPMs. I'm going to very gently go over the sidewall and cuticle areas of my natural nail. This is the nail prep that will allow my new dip powder manicure to adhere to my natural nails. During this step, I am removing the shine from my natural nail. You can also do this step with a hand file or a buffing block. I am also going to gently file over the surface of the entire nail to make sure that everything is smooth. I'm going to repeat the same process on all of the other nails. After the nails have been filed and dusted, I'm then going to take the depth bond, which is number one, and apply this to the natural nail. Applying this to your nail is optional, but it will help further prep the nail and allow your manicure to last longer. I'm then going to take the 180-180 grit hand file and reshape the edges of the nails. This step is really only optional when your nails are not perfectly shaped the way that you want. For the new dip powder manicure, I'm going to be using the dip base, which is number two, the activator, which is number three, the Bella Vina No Wipe Gel Top Coat, this gorgeous brown shade of dip powder, which is 455, it's called Pretzel Bark, the Mermaid Tail Fluffy Nail Brush from the July Surprise Mystery Box and the 180-180 Grit Hand File. Here is the dip powder color up close. I really love this shade of brown. I am going to be doing the regular method of dip powder application, so I'm going to be using the dip base, which is number 2, and I'm going to start by applying the dip base to the entire nail. You want to be careful not to get this on your skin. I recommend staying a hairline away from your cuticle area. Immediately after applying dip base, you're going to dip the nail at a 45 degree angle into the dip powder. Once you remove your finger, tap away any excess dip powder. That's your first layer of dip powder. I'm going to repeat the same step on all of my other nails. If you're having issues with your dip powder clumping up, it could be because you're pushing your nail down into the dip powder too hard. This is a common issue with dip powder nails. If you're having issues with your dip base flooding the sidewall and cuticle area, try to wipe the brush on the neck of the bottle before applying it to your nail. You can also try to apply the dip base a little bit further away from the cuticle area. If you get any dip powder on your cuticle or sidewall areas, immediately after you dip your nail into the dip powder, Take an orange wood stick and gently rub it around the sidewall and cuticle areas of the nail. This will remove any dip powder before it has a chance to dry. After that layer of dip powder is fully dry, I'm then going to take the Mermaid Tail Fluffy Nail Brush and dust away all of the dip powder from the nail. 
This step is really important to avoid contaminating your dip base brush. After all of the dip powder has been removed from the nail, I'm going to repeat the same step to do a second layer of dip powder on all of the nails. Doing multiple layers of dip powder color will not only give you the color that you desire, but it will also add strength to your nail to prevent it from breaking. Sometimes, some people may choose to do a layer of encapsulation after the dip powder color. If you would want to do that after doing your two layers of dip powder color, you would then do the normal dip powder application and dip into a clear dip powder. This will encapsulate the dip powder color and prevent you from filing off the opacity of the color when you go to file and shape the nails. After the second layer of dip powder has been dusted, I'm then going to take the activator, which is number 3, and apply this very generously to all of the nails. Activator is a very important step because it allows each layer of dip powder to fully harden and be ready to be shaped and filed. After the activator has been applied, I'm then going to take the 180-180 grit hand file and gently reshape the edges of the nails. Even though you may pre-shape your nails before dip powder application, sometimes the dip powder does alter the nail shape a little bit. I would definitely recommend that you do not skip this step after your dip powder application. I will also be taking a buffing block to buff over the surface of the entire nail. This will help give the surface of the nail a very smooth and professional looking finish. I'm going to shape and buff all of the other nails. I'm then going to take the 12 piece rhinestone and shape set from Double Dip. I'm going to pick a beautiful gold shape to place on my nail. This set has so many shapes and colors to choose from, so it was really hard to pick what I wanted. To apply the shape to my nail, I'm going to be using the Bella Vina Top Gel. I'm going to apply a layer of this to my entire nail. After the Top Gel has been applied, I'm then going to take the tweezers and pick a shape from the set. I picked this beautiful gold seashell shape. I'm going to place the seashell directly into the wet gel and once I center it on the nail, I'm then going to take the Bellavina top gel and apply a layer of this to all of the other nails. I am only applying the seashell to the nail by using the gel top coat. The reason for this is I have to change my nails very frequently for the YouTube videos. However, if you would like the shape to last longer and make sure that it doesn't pop off, try adhering it to your nail by using clear poly gel or acrylic. If you're unable to use gel products or a UV LED lamp, you can switch out this step for your dip top coat. This would be number 4. Personally, I really love to finish off my dip powder manicures with a gel top coat. 
I really love the shine that this gel top coat brings to my nails and I feel like it makes my manicure last a very long time. After the gel top coat has been applied to all of the nails, I'm then going to cure under the UV LED lamp for one minute. After the nails are cured, I'm then going to take Double Dip's cuticle oil, which is number 6, and apply this to all of the cuticles. It's really important to rehydrate your skin after doing your dip powder manicure. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this dip powder color and make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. See you guys in the next video. Bye!